Good evening, Africa. Good evening, African Confessions. I am back with another episode. There is a message that I want to share with you guys, and the message reads like this. Hello, how are you? So I had Brother Nashi reading my story. I am that woman who was saying that my helper sacrificed my three-year-old daughter. That time when I sent you my story, I could not finish it off. But here is the rest of that story. I had to come up with a plan that would help me to get access to that lady. She had hurt me to the deepest part of my heart and something had to be done so that she could understand how much she had broken me inside. The people close to me discouraged me, but nobody could understand the pain that I was feeling deep inside. It was me who had given birth to this girl that had just been killed by these heartless people. When I delivered my baby after carrying her for nine good months, I had an emergency C-section because of a complication. The doctors did all they could to save my little girl. Now someone who was just greedy for money would just come and take away my daughter. And here I was discouraged to get revenge. Why? I had to get revenge. This thing that people keep saying that revenge is for the Lord. But when you are in that situation whereby you have to decide if you have to revenge or not, you will never quote that Bible verse that say revenge is of the Lord. When your instincts drive in automatically, you will think about revenge. This one I can guarantee you. It doesn't matter if you are a pastor or if you are what, but what I know is that if your baby has been snatched away from you and you know the person who has snatched away your little girl or your little boy, immediately you are going to get into revenge mode. Only after revenging, that is when you can start thinking about quoting all of these Bible verses. As human beings, we all need to understand that deep down we are selfish Everything is all about me, me and only me. They don't care about the next person. Before you do anything to someone, what are they going to feel like? Nobody cares. We all care about how we feel in that moment. And whenever we feel or when we pretend to care for someone, it will be for a selfish reason. In the end, we will know that by showing that we care for other people, we will be doing it for our own good. A lot of people like to say revenge is not good, but this is only when nothing bad has been done to you. This is just lip service. In my own heart, I know that when you are not in a situation like I was in at that time, you will say that revenge is not good. You were supposed to wait for the Lord. But how was I supposed to wait for the Lord? Like I told you that the moment that I entered into that mortuary and when they were showing me the corpse of my little girl and with her eyes wide open and with her mouth wide open, as I was looking at her face, I saw that there was a lot of fear. That is when I decided that revenge was the only course of action that I had to take because as far as I knew, the police were going to take a very long time before they could finally give me justice. Yes, this woman was behind bars, but what kind of a justice was I going to be given by the law? There was no kind of a justice that the law was going to give me. All that I wanted was my baby. Anyway, we buried my little princess and it was heartbreaking to see her sleeping in a coffin. And you know what they did? Because my daughter, when they had found her, she died with her mouth wide open. So already they told me that there is nothing that they could do. So they ended up stitching her mouth because they could not even close it properly. It was quite a scary sight looking at my own baby girl with her mouth stitched 
and her eyes her eyes refused to be open because they said that they could do things to her so that her eyes could be closed but i didn't want her to look even more scary than she was already looking like with her mouth stitched like that it is normal to look at an older person lying dead in a coffin but there is just something scary looking at your own little girl lying dead in a coffin it was a small white casket and the picture will never leave my mind this little girl was full of energy love and life ahead of her tears could not stop gushing out of my eyes and the pain was just unbearable i was a mess and i felt even to walk she had to rest and me the one who brought her on this earth i had to fight for her fight for her justice and day by day my appetite for revenge grew bigger and bigger a lot of people on facebook are always looking for how to get rich do you know the amount of pain you cause to innocent people what has become of the human race what happened to the spirit of ubuntu how do you sacrifice people as if you are sacrificing goats and chicken anyway these are just the thoughts of an angry woman back to my story a week later I was advised by a friend to go and see this certain man who was residing somewhere in Mozambique. He was going to help me get the revenge I wanted. So he told me this was justice for my little princess. Yes, of course, I wanted to kill her with my own hands, but killing her would only make her feel numb forever. She had to feel pain while she was still alive. I wanted her to die slowly, either by cancer or something that would finish her while she was in agony, experiencing such kind of a pain that no one in this world had ever experienced. My little girl did not deserve the way that she died. We traveled to Mozambique and the traditional healer got me everything that I needed for this war. To me, this was already war. I had seen that the courts, they just kept on postponing the matter and it was hurting me even more. I knew that I had to handle it the African way to hell with these courts. I told myself while I was traveling to Mozambique. We arrived back home and I did what I was told and that following week that maid was released on bail. They said she was a first time offender and she did not do the real killing and they were claiming that the evidence was now pointing otherwise because this woman who was working as my maid, one of the guys who murdered my daughter was actually her boyfriend and she was claiming that her boyfriend was the one who had forced her to do all of this and i remember the day that she was crying in court saying that she didn't have any choice her boyfriend had told her that if you are not willing to do this we are going to murder your daughter since she had been threatened by a boyfriend and her boyfriend in court had admitted that on several accounts he had been threatening her and there was actually a day when he had gone and collected my maid's child and he had threatened her and told my maid that if you do not do these things that I want you to do for me, I am going to murder your own daughter. So the judge then said that since she is a first time offender and she had no choice in the matter, she deserved to be released on bail for now while least the investigations were continuing. I still remember on that day I saw her smiling and she looked at me. She cried and when she was walking out of court, she was accompanied by a family members and she explained that she didn't mean to do it. She was being threatened by her own boyfriend. This was a painful thing for me because I still remember that the first day when our case was had in court, the most important thing that she had said, which was not taken into account, was that this lady had said that those men had promised her a lot of money, hence she gave them access to my daughter. 
but as things were going on i think that they were using a lot of witchcraft and stuff like that because this lady was just released on bail like that i was heartbroken i looked at her and i kept quiet I was weak. I didn't know what to do anymore. She wanted me to forgive her. This is what she told the judge. She was crying all along. I don't know where they are training these judges now. Don't they know that there are people who can actually pretend to cry, pretending as if they are innocent, but deep down knowing that they are evil? I could not forgive her as if my toddler girl would wake up. I said in court, I can never forgive you for what you did to my daughter. This, she was supposed to feel like that before she sold my daughter. Now we had reached a point of return, especially when the judge said that this lady was eligible to be released on bail since she was a first-time offender. I looked at her and my face was emotionless. It was indifferent. I felt so much pity for her because she didn't know what was coming for her. I said nothing. Then she left with her family members. My mom responded and she said apology accepted because my mom she is a true christian even deep down i could see that she was heartbroken but she kept on telling me that revenge was of the lord let me say it is fine even if you think that i am not a christian i am 100 percent christian but there are things that i had to do for myself isn't it they say that the lord helps those that helps themselves this was my way of dealing with this pain. I trusted her with my life. I would pay her, but her kids' groceries and clothes, I treated her like my own sister. Was I wrong being nice to my own maid? I had to move very fast because I wanted to see her face when I striked. I gave that old man to go ahead and he striked. A mom just fell on the center of the house and my maid's mom died. Yes, it was blood for blood. The games were on. Remember that when this lady was suddenly arrested by the police, she had left her clothes in my mom's house, and I had stolen some of my maid's clothes, and when I had traveled to Mozambique, I left those clothes that belonged to my maid with that witch doctor back in Mozambique. So whenever he was doing the rituals, he told me that he will be using my maid's clothes as a link and a connection so that the rituals can connect to my maid. When the news reached us in our village that my maid's mom had died, I was the one of the first people to arrive in their village so that I can pay my condolences. I was a dead woman. I didn't care. I looked her right into her eyes and I said, I am sorry. I helped throughout the funeral. I was cooking. I was doing all the chores as if I cared, but I never cared for her. I was actually happy that she was crying. The moment that she looked at her mom's coffin, when she cried and cried, I was actually laughing in my own heart. I had stopped being a human. I wanted her to feel the pain that I had felt before. She cried on the day of the funeral. And I went and I said into her ear, this is more than what I felt like when my daughter died. At least your mother was old. What about my little daughter? We had a bright life ahead of her. What do you think I was feeling on her funeral? She cried and I walked away and I smiled when she kept on crying. After burial, I gave that old man another signal to strike again. This time it was her leg. She fell down and from that time she failed to walk. One leg was well, the other one was swollen and was very painful. Looked like I had grounded her. I looked at her in her eyes and said, Those who lived by the sword die with the sword. And I left. On that day, when I went to visit her, I actually 
bought some groceries for her and I said that since you can no longer work, I have bought these groceries for you so that you can eat whilst you are trying to heal your leg. Then I opened up a couple of Bible verses, but all of the Bible verses that I opened up on that day before I had left because I told her that I wanted to pray for her so that the Lord can heal her very quickly. I opened up a couple of verses and all of those verses were speaking about about how the Lord was going to bring all of my enemies underneath my feet. I had gotten my revenge. I felt like a hero. I went to my daughter's grave and I poured some medicine that had been given to me by that witch doctor when I was still in Mozambique. And I cried because I asked myself as I was pouring that medicine, I said, what have I become? I had turned into a monster. She later went to trial and that lady, she was sentenced to 15 years in prison and rumors were going around the village and the rumors were that the first time when she had been arrested by those policemen that had came at our house and arrested her at that time when my baby was still missing the rumors were saying that this lady's mother the one that had just passed away she was actually a very powerful witch and in her family there were a lot of witch doctors so people were saying that my maid's mother was actually telling people that her own daughter was never going to be sentenced and actually she was going to get out of prison and this is what happened that first time when unexpectedly the judge just released my maid who was the main suspect and on the conditions that she was a first time offender and she deserved to get out on bail. But the second time around when we went back to court she had no one in her corner and I had this powerful witch doctor from Mozambique on my own corner. And yes, he fought for me. I was happy. I wanted to scream when I heard the judge saying that I hereby sentence you to 15 years. 15 years she will be out. How about my daughter? Yes, I was happy at that time. But there are times whereby I think that what about my little daughter who is going to be trapped underneath the earth maybe for the next thousand or so years? 15 years is not enough. She will be out and she will continue with her life because she was quite young. How about me? I left the country anyway with my kids. I had gotten another job opportunity. When I arrived back in South Africa after working for a couple of months, that is when I heard that I had been recommended by the company that I was working for and I was supposed to go to Europe. That is where I will be stationed in I will never set my feet to Africa again. Was I a murderer? No, she is the one who pushed me to the end. Seeking revenge is not good, but this made me feel like a hero for my own daughter. Do I have peace? No, but there are times that I tell myself that she paid for my sins. You know what they say that sometimes God's reply, it can take forever. And I was not going to wait forever for this woman to be behind bars. Dear listeners, right there was a message that was forwarded to me by one of our admins. Yeah, ne. Please let us speak with our dear sister. On her side, she is saying that revenge is good. What do you think about her story? Please let us talk about this issue in the comment section. I'll be back with another episode.